NBC Sports presents, live in its 29th season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today, from Grand Prairie, Texas, it's the $150,000 Quaker State Open. Making his first career appearance is Tim Weisbrod of Cincinnati. We'll be facing 1989 triple titleist Randy Peterson of Santa Maria, California. That winner will meet the reigning PBA Player of the Year in his third consecutive finals, Amleto Monicelli. The semifinal match features the man who has won this tournament twice, Hugh Miller of Seattle. And our tournament leader is six-time champion Don Janello, appearing for the second consecutive week. That's our outstanding field for today's Professional Bowlers Tour telecast. Looking at the skyline of Big D, Dallas, Texas. We're in the Metroplex area, where once all the surrounding land was ranch land. We've come to the friendly city of Grand Prairie, Texas, an all-American city. Hello again, I'm Chris Sankel. A few weeks ago, I arrived at the bowling establishment in a 400-horsepower Chevrolet Corvette. So why not with a 10-year-old beautiful quarter horse named McDade? I love him. Isn't he beautiful? Well. They say here in Texas, the outside of a horse makes the inside of a man feel good, and that is so true. And speaking of inside, my colleague Tonto Burton is there to tell us about today's field and today's condition. Let's go. Come on, Dave. Thank you, Chris. There's an overflow crowd here at the Forum Bowl in Grand Prairie, Texas. We're just a few moments away from the first shot in the 1990 Quaker State Finals. But before we get into that championship game, I'd like to reflect on a little bit of the history of this tournament. There's been five first-time winners here at the Quaker State, and the most memorable moment was in 1988 when Bob Benoit bowled the only 300-game shot in the title match here, 1988. Now, the players in today's field are capable of that type of action. We have a national champion, Peterson, in the first match, and the dominant player, Monicelli, making his third consecutive appearance, is in the second match. So he's going to be very tough against whoever he bowls. It may be Don Janelle at the top, who's tough to win, to build, excuse me, to win a tournament from. And you know what? Let's take a look at the lane conditions we have today on today's championship round. First, you see the light-colored part of the lane. Now, that looks like it's a drier or slicker part of the lane, but it's not. That's the maple wood, and it matches the pine. And the amateurs usually bowl on 24 feet of oil, and that's just past the arrows. Now, what the pros bowl on today is 41 feet of oil, and it's all very slick in this area. And then now, with the angle they're playing, is Monticelli's playing the big hook out to the first arrow, and then right down the second arrow is Janello. And finally, Hugh Miller will be playing the left side down the left side, Chris, and it's an extreme angle, and there's a lot of money available for these players. A total purse of $150,000. You see the breakdown, 28 to the winner, 14, 5, 85, 7, and 6. So in the next four matches, live coverage from the Forum, the bowling establishment with chandeliers. And here's a guy that's appreciative of all types of living, including chandelier and champagne. Randy Peterson, California, shooting first. He's on the left lane. Beautiful stroke by the 27-year-old. Now our first opportunity, Nelson, on television to meet 29-year-old Tim Weisbrod of Cincinnati, Ohio, a city that's always been known for bowling enthusiasm. Well, he uh, was an outstanding amateur, Chris. He won over $75,000 in the Hoinkie tournament held there in Cincinnati, and then he decided to turn pro. All but the seven pin for the professional who's looking for his first money earned here in 1990. Tim, when he first came out on the tour, Chris, making the change from amateur status to pro status was just not ready. He really struggled with speed control, and he tried to play everybody else's game. He's much sharper right now. Okay, marking with that spare. So one frame completed by both professionals. Tim Weisbrod, he's 6'1", 150 pounds.
very enthusiastic about being in this spot as a non-winner. We're having some technical difficulty and our usual graphics that help you in enjoying this not working at the moment. So now a two and sleeper eight for the Ohioan. Wisebrod uh, basically started as a junior bowler. At age nine, he joined a junior league, and he averaged 105 his first year. So quite an improvement as he averaged almost 220 to make the championship round this week. He and his roommate, Jim Miller, the only two pros this week that shot perfect 300 games. <laughs> Pair of spares for Weisbrod of Cincinnati. Now back to... Santa Maria's Randy Peterson won the national championship of the PBA 1987 in Toledo. 13th television appearance. Something a little off stride. He may have either picked up the wrong ball or his thumb hole was a little bit slippery as he pushed the ball away. Randy gets in that swing very early. The 25 second time rule uh, basically will not be in effect if there's something that goes awry. There is a, a little forgiveness there, but pro bowlers have 25 seconds to throw the ball from the time their opponent finishes his frame. Overcoming a slight disruption, Randy Peterson, seven championships. Here's the form of Randy Peterson, and notice the pronounced push away, then the very high bag swing. So he's a very relaxed swing, then he'll tuck that swing in nice, right next to his left ankle. The good lift and turn you see he's playing around the first arrow, swinging it out to the channel. He's off to a quick start with two strikes. Randy won the Japan Cup last year, defeating Amleto Monicelli, whom you'll see on our telecast today. Stay out, stay out. Well, he didn't trip the four. The championship pair, 39 and 40 here at Forum Lanes, is well known by all the players. We've been bowling here since 1975, and the left-hand lane hooks a little bit more. As you see, the angle of Randy Peterson rolls that ball over the first arrow, gets a little bit high, leaves the four. Easy spare. We're in Grand Prairie, Texas, not too far from Fort Worth, where the Southwest Exposition and uh, Fat Cattle Show is taking place along with rodeos. You'll see some excerpts of that as we go in and out of commercials today. It's an important part of the culture, the history of uh, the great Southwest. So, Tim, now, four, six, seven, ten. Tim off to a, just a slow start, a little bit tentative, and he has to keep his ball speed up or he'll be high every time. So. He has to try just knock two of these pins back and hopefully can bounce one out of the pit. Hello, but the four. And 17 miles an hour bow, that's not very fast. Not fast for a uh, spare shot, especially, Chris. Uh, the good players keep the ball 18, 19, even 20 miles an hour in their first shot. That helps the ball, what we call, set up or control the ball in the last 15 feet so it doesn't hook too much. Tim, a little tentative in the early going here, has gotten himself in big trouble. He trails by 26. Well, he left the 10 pin on the left lane. The style of wise broad on the left lane sends it out over the second arrow. Now watch this is what we call the swishing 7-10. He blows the five pin in front of the seven, just avoids the split. Uh, ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour will be back after this message and a word from our local ABC station. There's a rough road ahead with no end in sight. Quaker State engines don't know when to quit. Prairie, Texas for the 14th Quaker State Open. Randy Peterson in that bright red shirt has a 26-pin lead over Tim Weisbrod of Cincinnati. And now uh, we're happy to see our graphics starting to uh, show up on your screens at home to help you with scores, identification, etc. Stay out! Get out of here! 
Randy opened with a double and marked with a spare and is shouting as he is uh, mic'd. You can hear everything he says. You can practically hear him breathe. Wonderful guy, funny guy. What a great break he got on that shot. The ball drifted high, almost had the 4-6 split. The uh, three pin took out the six and the two pin took out the four. Off to a quick lead, can make it 36 pins with another strike here in the fifth. Randy Peterson. Now, Tim Weisbrod. 160 uh, started earlier this week. There were 22 left-handers. One of them is in our final. His name is Hugh Miller, finishing number two behind the tournament leader, Don Janello. That should help him relax. His first strike coming in the fifth frame. Weisbrod, who bowled Walter Ray Williams Jr. in the 42nd game last night to earn the right to be in the championship round today, bowled a 250 against Walter Ray. So when he gets his confidence going, he can be very tough. He needs to get a couple of strikes here, put some pressure on Randy Peterson. Come on, ball. All right. Big double. Showing the lead to 26 pins, but Red Hot Randy, shirt included, is back up with a double shooting in the sixth frame on the right lane. Little psych job going out there. You saw Randy Peterson run out that strike in the fifth. Wisebrod with his double there in the sixth uh, kind of pointed his finger at Randy, so the game is on. So confident today. Just walking away, knowing full well it was going to be a perfect pocket hit. And the look he gave Tim Weisbrot, who is uh, looking down at the four, Randy kind of said, take that. So uh, a little more action going on than just with the pins. Randy can make that lead 46 with one more strike here in the seventh. two all-time PBA. Mark Roth on the left, Marshall Holman on the right. Hope to have an opportunity to visit with them a little later on, Bo. And both of those players have won the Quaker State Open. Now, Tim Weisbrod up here. He trails by 46, has two strikes up. Needs to keep his string going to close the difference between he and Randy Peterson. Five. Terrible high hit leading the four, six, seven, nine, ten. Well, some people call that the toughest split we have as he cuts high. And really the way to make this, Chris, is to try to get, as you see the ball cut right through the heart, is try to slide that four pin over into the six, nine, ten area. And I think Tim's going to try that attack because he does need to make this to stay in the match. Trouble. And coming... In the seventh frame of this, our very first game, uh, the winner will advance and will meet Amleto Monicelli, who continues to practice and warm up. Chris explained the 25-second rule of the PBA. When Tim Weisbrod's ball came back on the left land lane, he has 25, 25 seconds to throw the ball. That was an eighth-frame strike. Now for the player on the right-hand lane, which is Randy Peterson, he has 25 seconds to roll the ball after his opponent finishes the frame. So it's different on the right-hand lane as the left-hand lane. A good rule. And Randy has now strung five in a row here in our first match. Three-time winner last year, including the AC Delco Classic at 
Gable House in Torrance, California. As we mentioned earlier, the Japan Cup and the Budweiser Classic in Miami, Florida. Make it six in a most impressive opening performance. Possible 279 for Randy Peterson. The best Tim could roll is 202. Leaving a 610 for the man that uh, is going to earn more money today than he ever has. Speaking of Weisbrod, he'll get $6,000. Pretty good paycheck. Sure. I slid by. So, chopping the 10 off the 6, but it's another uh, step in his education. <clears throat> but he met a red hot, red hot Randy Peterson. The Don Carter Classic, that's next Saturday in Kenner, Louisiana, suburb of New Orleans. Always good to get back there and see Pete Fountain. Good high-scoring house, too, Chris. Brian Voss will be there to defend his championship. Del Ballard, Goodbye today, boys. who was a champion here in Grand Prairie, tied for 30th, and then having some back problems. So Randy Peterson of California will go against Venezuela's Amleto Monticelli in our second game of our afternoon at Texas. Fans for quality. Always has, always will. By NyQuil, in original and cherry flavors. And by the Big Meadow Shaver. It stretches your skin for a great shave. Randy Peterson of California, leaving the 10, fired a 268 to Tim Weisbrod's 156, and I meets another red-hot bowler named Amleto Monicelli. Here's some basketball scores of final. Sixth-ranked Georgetown over arch-rival St. John, 74-67. And the seventh-ranked Syracuse, still staying high and good, 90-69 over Florida State. We have Budweiser Kingpin standings and points. Players finishing among the top 24 will be awarded points. And as you see, first place, 125, second, 100, and so on down the line with 10 bonus points going to the tournament leader. At this point is 205, Marshall Holman, 160, Monicelli, who will be bowling next, 150. So we're going now with Monicelli and Randy Peterson. Randy again, winning 268 to 156, and Monicelli will fire first to the... PBA player of the year last year. The last two times these fellows have met in the championship round, Randy Peterson has won. Leaving a four pin, Amleto, who was third last week at the Panola Open and fourth at the Showboat Invitational in Las Vegas. Looking for another bowling ball with a lower surface friction to convert to spare. Monicelli has improved his spare making with a much different style to Spares. He throws the ball hard and straight, cuts down the hook. So this is like a rematch of uh, the past year's Japan Cup where Randy won it, defeating Monicelli. Uh, Monicelli having won the Japan Cup for his very first of six titles. So here they go head to head again, and that's our format, step ladder, Format. You win, you advance, you lose, you take your check and leave. Ten Ben on the right lane. Nine. The first solid tap that uh, we've Pretty seen in the good. championship round so far, and that's what's made the scores so high in recent years here. They're on lanes 39 and 40. The ability to carry. The pocket is relatively easy to hit from any angle. You see Monicelli playing the big hook, Peterson the down and in shot. Waker State Open, which each year benefits the Texas Scottish Rites Hospital for Crippled Children. Over $150,000 thus far developed for that very needed facility. And uh, they do such a great job. And here a, a youngster uh, did this drawing and was presented to me last night. Well, we love them too, and we thank them for doing that, that they like the professional bowlers tour. That's great. 
a 7-10 for Randy Peterson, who earlier in the week converted a 7-10 right here. He calls it the swishing 7-10. The ball hits light in the pocket, an apparent good hit, and knocks the five pin in front of the seven. The six chops off the 10, and his technique to try to make it, uh, once again, will be throw it hard and straight at the 10 pin, hopefully bounce it out. Oh. See that pin yes, coming up? Did. That's how Roth made it years ago. And Mark Roth, uh, along with Marshall Holman, watching here live along with you. And they have great admiration for Amleto Monicelli and Randy here as Amleto now. Spare up second frame. That was a typical Monicelli strike, wasn't it? He has that big hook ball working. He's just uh, concentrating, working on his game. He's really a dedicated athlete. Uh, Amleto weighed over 200 pounds about eight or nine years ago, and he took up uh, jogging, running, and obviously a lot of bowling. And he's down to 150 in top condition, but he maintains that conditioning through running and weightlifting. Top player in the world right now. Ten pen for the man that finished strong at 89, winning back-to-back -back titles. But it, five times he's been in the top ten in the last 14 tournaments. That's consistency. <laughs> That's domination. Two other times he was sixth and just barely got <laughs> knocked out of the top five. Huge crowd here. Grand Prairie to Fulham Lanes. You couldn't pack in any more. That's how much they appreciate the Quaker State Open and the sport of professional bowling. Here's one of the reasons. Colorful Randy Peterson trailing now by 13. Once again, something mm. bothered Randy. Now, in the first game, uh, we saw him stop, and he said he thought he heard a noise. Now, the second time uh, he stopped, there's apparently something wrong with the his thumb bowl. Uh, there's not really much okay, you can do about it. He's smarter to stop and wait. Can get your head in the game. Hear that? Get your head in the game. I'll well, strike it. And even though he struck, he did get a warning, Nelson, on the 25 second row. Right, Chris, as we said before, the player on the right hand lane has, lane has 25 can seconds to roll the ball. As soon as the opponent finishes his frame. Now Randy here has 25 seconds to roll the ball from the time his ball came back. Now he's taking a re-rack, and uh, that will affect his 25 seconds. If he gets warned again, he will not be warned. He will be fined $100. Remember now, he has that strike up. He can cut Monticelli's lead to uh, three. Uh, Okay, a very close second day. Three pins separating these two pros. We'll be back. It's the Don Carter Classic from New Orleans on ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour next Saturday. Yes, to the Crescent City next week for the Don Carter Classic. All right, final score, fourth-ranked Michigan over Big Ten rival Wisconsin, 77 63. Big Big Ten battle tomorrow here on ABC. Indiana, Illinois. Number 11 against number 22. Now Monticelli leads by three. <laughs> Crossing over to Barquisimeto, Venezuela. That's where Teresa, his wife, is from as well. Pretty lady. He relies on her a great deal. Well, it's important to have a lot of support while you're out here on the tour. Tough life sometimes. Now, Monicelli had a good pocket hit in the first frame, left a four pin, strike in the second, ten pin in the third, got the great break in the fourth. As you see the full grip of Monicelli, he can extend his lead to 13 here in the fifth. All but a ten. Fourteenth, Quaker State Open. 
Chris Monicelli is going to have trouble with that big hook today. It's what is happening is it's rolling out. You can hook the ball and bring it a long way, but it has to continue hooking. His ball is quitting or straightening out the last five feet, and that makes it somewhat ineffective, and that's why he left that 10 pin. <laughs> Monicelli in blue, Peterson in red. Randy with a double up can take the lead now. Shooting in the fifth frame. Warned once on the 25 second limit. Step! Oh, what a break. How about that? Oh. Now tell me about that one. Well, that's the second time Randy's had a shot like that. As you see from the overhead view, he's playing a medium line, sliding about the center of the lane, starting it out over the first arrow. Now watch the action of the three pin and the two pin. The, there's the two pin to the left side board, the three pin to the right side board, takes out the four six split and allows him to take a seven pin lead. All right, he's moved to the left side now. Or last time there he took a re rack. and this being our 29th season for the professional bowlers tour on ABC, do you realize 27-year-old Randy Peterson and 28-year-old Monicelli weren't even born when we started? <laughs> oh, no. Well, they're really benefactors of the forerunners of the scheme, the Don Carters and the Dick Webbers, who made it so good for these young players today. Bo Burton was 17 titles and in two Halls of Fame I had a lot to do with it too. Well, thank you. Once again, watching Monicelli's ball. See it just hanging on the edge. Now watch it. Hook, hook, hook. Now start to straighten out just a little bit at the end there and it leaves the four pin. He needs a little more ball speed, something like Randy Peterson's using as Monicelli's only 14 miles an hour. That's awfully slow. Physically conditioned. Probably if he were a boxer, his trainers would love him because he would be fit. And that's all they can ask when they step through the ropes, that, which will be happening on ABC Today, Wide World of Sports. Broadcast premiere, Cooney. Well, Cooney and Foreman. Mm -hmm. and then I like the McCallum and Collins fight, Chris. You're going to have to pick a winner for me there. Tough I, fight. I'm going to have an upset. Undefeated Irish Stevie Collins from Boston. Sounds good. <laughs> Beautiful shot by Monicelli. Strike coming in the seventh frame. Still trailing by 18 pins. More after this. Okay, Cooney, Foreman, McCallum, Collins, and Bill Shoemaker's last ride. It's not the last ride for these two pros. While we're away, as we're running behind our allotted time schedule, Randy Peterson uh, left a seven pin, covered it, then the eighth frame with a strike, still leading by 17. Strike up, though, for Monticelli. Just startling, Chris. He's rolling the ball 15, 16 miles an hour, and that time it was just 14 miles an hour. It shows you how important to maintain a consistent speed especially up at the 16, 17, 18 level. Monticelli does not have control of that big hook today. He needs to, and there's the radar gun that is timing those shots. All right. Uh, I guess similar equipment on the highways around America, too. <laughs> I'll bet everybody knows a little bit about those. <laughs> now, for Monticelli coming up in the ninth frame, he trails Randy Peterson, who's a tough customer, by 17 pins. Monticelli has a possible 219 game. Peterson going at a 216 clip. So it's a must situation right now for Monicelli. All right. Beautiful foundation strike. And Bo, I guess it's fitting that our radar gun is being manned today by one of Fort Worth's finest detectives. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it isn't the Arling police, Arlington <laughs> police. I had the, they've worked well on me a couple years ago. Really? Oh, yes. Are you a speeder? <laughs> Not really. They just had the wrong limit up there. <laughs> work, gotta work! Oh, yeah, he talked to it. That's a big, big double. 27 pin lead at this point. He won the first game, if you just joined us, 268 to 
Tim Weiss Broad's 156. I've got to show you our detective. Would you trust this man? I would. You bet. Well, it's up to Peterson to trust this ball right now because if he strikes on this shot, he shuts out Amleto Monticelli and he'll go against the lefty, Hugh Miller. You can count on it when Randy gets to the line, the release is done, and he starts walking away that it's a strike. What confidence in his ability. Just tremendous, has that high arm swing. He's very loose and relaxed, trusted that ball wide, and has proven himself to be a great clutch bowler also on the Pro Bowlers Tour. So it's going to be Randy Peterson against the two-time winner of this tournament, lefty Hugh Miller in the semifinal. So despite, despite what he thought of that last shot, he has won the second game. Coming up, and we'll be back, of course, with this match. Miller Peterson. Today's bowling tip of the week is on a problem I call follow through fear. It's a problem that many amateurs have and even top professionals when they're under pressure. And it goes something like this. A player is in good position with just a half a step to go to release the ball. He's afraid of missing the head pin to the right, so he pulls the ball left of the intended target line, hits the nose. Or he gets up to the foul line in good shape, and he panics. He's afraid of getting a split, and he throws the ball too far to the right. Now let's take a look at an example of both these types of follow-through fears. First, the ball that is pulled to the left. A player goes inside the target line, often gets a split. Or... The opposite is true. A player gets to the foul line in pretty good shape. Then he's afraid of getting a split, so he sends the ball way right to the right, often missing the head pin. Now here's a way to overcome follow-through fear. When you're practicing, take your four and a half step delivery as I do, and just before you release the ball, close your eyes, and you watch how often your follow-through will go right along the intended target line. Here we go. There you can see how it works. Overcome follow-through fear by practicing closing your eyes at the last half a step, and you'll improve your game. ABC Sports brings you the ultimate bowling home video. Now, let's get on with... Making every roll more stable, every impact more powerful. The Thunderbolt Dual Block from Ebonite. Randy Peterson of California now has 16 strikes and two victories, 230 and seven strikes in his win over Monticelli, who shot a 2-8. Now a man who has won twice here at Quaker State. His last win was in 1984. Right here, left-hander Hugh Miller is going against Randy Peterson in our semifinal match as they continue to practice and warm up here. And our tournament leader, whom you saw last week in the Pinole Open, he was fourth last week, Don Janello. Our next two stops, Nelson. Ah, back to New Orleans area. A Kenner stop is a new spot, and uh, it's a very high-scoring house. And on to Sunrise, Florida, for another Don Carter Bowling Center, the Budweiser Classic. A uh, little bit of warm weather coming our way. And we had a 160-man field here. The whole field averaged 204, 212 to make the top 24. And here's some of the other finishers. Stay Rook, the lefty, Walter Ray. Purvis Granger heading home next week. Mark Wood, Firestone champion. Quit Stoker every, every week. Jimmy Fritz Jr., good check. David Husted, he was in the championship round this year in Vegas. Rick Steelsmith on the comeback. Pete Weber, about 15th. Bob Benoit, the 300 man here at the Quaker State. Ernie Schlegel, former president of the PBA. Andy Nyer. Jeff Bellinger returning to the tour, the big guy. John Mazza, the good practicer. And the cranker, Bob Hanley. Steve Hoskins, Rookie of the Year, Brad Snell, another lefty, and Dave Ferraro rounded out in the top 24. Quaker State Open, 14th one here at the Forum Lanes. Company that loves motorsports and bowling. Here's a professional that loves both, Hugh Miller of Seattle. Oh, 
he got a nice late break on the left lane. Winner in 80 and 84 right here. Watch the action on the right-hand part of your screen. The head pin will go to the sideboard, then just be shot straight across the lane and take out the seven. A great break for Hugh Miller starting the semifinal match against the hot Randy Peterson. <laughs> so we're all even after one match. Three wreck, please. Three wreck, please. Six pin, second pin on the right-hand part of your screen. In the channel, a lot of power and spin on it. Still taps out the 10. This week, we're using three pounds, six, and seven ounce pins. But with plenty of hook at the back end, the players are making them dance. This is the man that's danced the most, 268 in his first victory, and 230 over Monticelli's 208. Two sleeper eight. A two eight. Uh, you see every day or every frame, the ball carries a little bit farther down the lane before hooking, and that's what they have to guard against. Watch the angle, still around the first arrow. Now the ball goes farther and farther down the lane before hooking. He leaves the two eight double wood spare. Tough shot. Something you have to guard against. Always in bowling today is what we call oil carry down. Watch that ball hooking less. Not too much. <laughs> okay. Waiting in the wings is tournament leader Don Janello, who likes the top seed spot. He's been very successful from there. Here's Hugh Miller now with a strike up. Left a four pin. He uh, had a shoulder separation on his right side and also a fracture of the arm, but he's come back and he sustained it by helping to remove his father's sailboat from the water. Good spare shooter. Accurate and consistent, right? Well, Chris, he never lost a game in the championship round. When he came out on the PBA Tour, his first six appearances on national television, he won every single game, and he had never missed a spare at that time. Then in 1986, he missed the 1379 in Peoria, and he's missed a few spares since then, and his record has dropped to nine wins and six losses, so he's just three and six when he's been a little bit wild. There was a beautiful strike. Hugh is 33 years old. Randy is 27. Randy started bowling at the age of eight. He told me his first year average, 93. Curiously, Stayed on, the, on the rim of the channel. Jesus. He's talking to him himself and to his opponent. Watch how wide this is, almost out to the very last board. Not enough speed, drifts high. He was 16 miles an hour on that shot, and he's been 18 in previous shots when he struck. Two-time winner this afternoon, Randy Peterson. He has a total of seven titles, including a major event, the 87 National Championship in Toledo. Randy got his start on the PBA Tour by selling shares in himself, $750 a share, and he has rewarded many of his backers with that, as you see the wide grip of a quick-starting Randy Peterson. Get there. Okay, Randy Peterson with a strike in the fourth. Trailing by two, however, we'll be back. Battles Texas on ABC's College Basketball tomorrow. College Basketball doubleheader on ABC tomorrow. Here is Homer Ellenberg, president of Quaker State Oil and Refining Company, who have sponsored this tournament for 14 consecutive years. Ah, on the right, Byron Nelson and his wife Peggy wearing one of the gold medals that he won with a 1937 victory at Augusta. Golf legend, 1945, 11 PGA tournaments in a row, 18 in a single year. A record, I believe, will never be broken. Cherished colleague for years and years and lots of tournaments. And Hugh Miller from Seattle. 
with a strike up shooting in the fourth frame, leaving the two pin. Really struggling on the right hand lane. He struck solid in the pocket on the left hand lane in the first and third frames and has drifted high on the right hand lane in both the second and fourth frames. Luckily has come away with an easy spare to make. You just joined us. Uh, Randy Peterson defeated Tim Weisbrod of Cincinnati, 268 to 156, and then eliminated Amleto Monticelli, 230 to 208. Peterson uh, now trailing by a couple of pins as he goes against Hugh Miller. Hugh Miller, another dedicated athlete, loves to run, runs 8, 10 miles a day, and has completed a 26-mile marathon, so he's in top shape all the time. And in the off time, he heads to Idaho and works on his grandmother's ranch, so you know that he's fit. Randy keeps in shape by driving his 944 Porsche in California. Do <laughs> it. <laughs> Randy is miked. And if he can get beyond Hugh Miller into the final game, uh, you may hear some incessant. Talking. Brandy Peterson, who has opted for different color shoes simply because the left shoe was not sliding enough for him that matches that right red one. So he took the left one, which slides a little bit more, and watch the long slide. Nice and smooth. Perfect. Got him like this, one of his best shots of the match. So was that by Hugh Miller. But it's Peterson with the lead by eight pins. Key by virtue of three in a row. Key shot for Hugh Miller there, Chris, where if he had made another bad shot on the right-hand lane, he'd have opened up the game for Randy Peterson. not worried about what the lefty's doing. Miller can take the lead with another strike. Robbed a seven pin. If it looks like Hugh Miller's ball is not hitting as hard as Randy Peterson's, it's very true. Not only does he have as, not as much power as you see it out there on the first board as Randy Peterson, but he's also using a, a uh, plastic ball or what we call a polyester bowling ball, and I haven't seen anybody win a pro tournament in many years with one of these little bit softer hitting balls. All right. Randy Peterson leading Hugh Miller, the left-hander, by nine. It's the Don Carter Classic from New Orleans on ABC's Pro Bowlers Tour next Saturday. New Orleans next week, and now one of the grand ladies of all of Texas, Ginny Halsey, proprietor of Forum Bowling Lanes. What a loyal and cherished friend. Great history of tournaments here. We've had the 1975 National Championship here, and the Quaker State has been the home many years. Forum Bowl, now Randy Peterson leads by nine, has three strikes working, can extend that lead to 19 here in the seventh. Crossing over, God. leaving a three. As you see his style from the front view, Randy Peterson uh, wasn't quite that quick, but his <laughs> feet were as he leaves the three pin and avoids the split. You know, Chris, a player does not mind throwing the ball a little wide, trusting it, and not getting a strike. But he hates to pull the ball like Randy just did. That's very discouraging. That's one of the big killers in professional bowling is to pull the ball high and get a split. And your tip today, follow through fear, had a lot to do with that, and I enjoyed it. Thank you. Come on, Randy. A little mixer by Randy 
Peterson of Santa Maria, California. Close match. Miller with the spare up will be shooting in the eighth. Watch the action of the head pin. Takes out the four, seven, and eight pins. And here's a tough customer up here in the eighth frame. He struggled on this lane, though. And for the left-hander, a three and sleeper nine. Looks a little bit upset at himself, and Hugh Miller is a speed control bowler. As you see his ball out there on the first board, if he goes a little bit high, he'll throw it harder. If he comes in a little light, as he did on this shot, leaving the 3-9, he'll throw the next shot a little bit slower. And that technique is just not working for him so far today. Coming up to the big ninth frame for both. Miller, a 2.07 pace, Peterson, 2.17. The match will be determined in the last two frames. As you see the grip, the full grip of Hugh Miller. Winner today of the Quaker State, 28,000, runner up 14.5. Thus far, Tim Weisbrod. 6,000, and then Leto Monticelli, 7. Loser of this game, 8,500. This game's going right to the 10th frame. <laughs> Matching New Miller's Foundation Knight Strike, our semifinal match. Randy, the big stretch, the big follow-through, and he's got to like that as all 10 pins were, pins were driven straight back in the pit. Now here in the 10th frame, with a strike, he can lock out Miller. If he doesn't strike, Miller can still win the match. No! Seven. No! Boy, he threw a good shot on that lane, too, and he just left the swish in seven pin. Now, Peterson with a spare will be at the 226 pace. The head pin just does not quite get the four and seven pins. He knows he's throwing as well. Peterson, a strike would mean 226. Hugh Miller can still bowl 227. So 310 on the left lane. 224. Now, Hugh Miller must strike on the next two balls and get an eight count to win. He has only struck one time on this lane. And there it is, a seven pin. So, Randy Peterson now, starting in the very first match, has won three, earning the right to go against Don Janello for the 28,000. ABC Sports Presentation of Professional Bowling will be back after this message and a word from our local ABC station. Frank Gifford from New York. Don't forget, coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the broadcast premiere of the George Foreman Jerry Cooney heavyweight fight. Plus, live WBA middleweight champion Mike McCallum will defend his crown against unbeaten Steve Collins. And also live today, legendary jockey Bill Shoemaker's final ride. It's all coming your way at 4.30 Eastern time. But right now, let's return to Chris Shankle and today's final match. Chris? Thank you, Frank. And we look forward to Wide World today. Boxing and Bill Shoemaker's last ride. Okay. Riding high here is Randy Peterson of California. He won that uh, last match. Gives him a right to go to the finals. Let's learn more about him up close and personal.
In the quiet community of Santa Maria, California, lives a not-so-quiet bowler named Randy Peterson. He's not a subdued Californian, and he's not your average bowler. No, Randy might better fit in with the cast of Saturday Night Live. I really don't know why people think I'm uh, funny or crazy. Well, I don't understand where they get that idea. Jump back when I kid myself. <laughs> hey! <laughs> no, Norman. Norman, what do you mean you don't know how to pick up strawberries? You just bend over and pick them up, you boob. I was married for two years. That would be like Club Med. Ah! <laughs> Nurse Ratchet, can I have my cigarette, please? Who can make the sun rise? Oh, the candy man can. The candy man can, cause he mixes it with luck. And I mean that, babe. You won't work in this town, babe. I think the reason why I joke and fool around and kid the way I do is because, to me, that that's how I get the most out of life. Randy's outgoing personality and love for life is even more remarkable given the circumstances in which he was raised. His parents were divorced when he was very young. His mother passed away several years ago, but he continued to live with his grandpa. Everybody's got problems. There's tragedy all over the world. And I think in a way that's why I'm funny all the time. Randy Peterson, a delightful professional. You know, I heard once that it's really healthy to laugh, and I must, I, I gotta be a real healthy guy then, because I'm laughing all the time. And I mean that, babe. Wow, fine. Okay, there he is. Fans here loved it. And I'm sure if Byron Nelson, who is here, were to analyze that golf swing, he'd have uh, an eight or a nine on a ranking of 10. I believe so. Uh, Randy Peterson, a four handicap golfer. And Byron uh, obviously enjoyed that piece, and we're going to have a great championship match here. Don Janelle has only lost one time from the top position in his career, and Randy Peterson has never missed throwing a strike when he needed it for a title. So two tough players. Don's shot coming up a little high, leaving the six. Like Randy, Don is wearing a wireless mic. And with uh, boxing... Foreman Cooney and McCallum Collins on wide roll today. I'd describe Don Janello as a fighter type. I mean, he's in there battling all the time. He doesn't give me any slack. <laughs> Native of Long Island now, bowling out of Perrysburg, Ohio. in three games and now. Shot. Well, he just eased up the speed a little bit. Mm -hmm. The 6-7-10 split. He's quickly up on the approach and he has to get that ball over by the 6-pin. Slide that 6-pin over into the 7. All out. And it's an open frame to start out his fourth match of the afternoon, the championship game. Just slides by the sixth, and he thought he had it made. Just had to clip the edge of the sixth. It didn't quite do it. Actually cut it too close. You know, uh, a statistic that is, bodes well for Don Janelle is the tournament leader has not lost once this year. He's won all three times. He won in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Pinole Valley. And right now, Randy Pearson is trailing. Brandon getting all the leaves now. Here is one on the left lane. Awesome. And here's how he got that shot. He started that ball out over the first arrow, a little bit soft again, down around 15 miles an hour. He cuts right through the middle with that big hook, leaves the 3, 4, 6, 7, 10. Has to slide the 3 over into the 4, 7 zone. Ball will take out the 6 and 10 pins. Very professional shot, but not the result. So we have back-to-back -back open frames for this man, his Gino. opponent, Don Janello. Janello, with one of the biggest hands in professional bowling, stretches that hand all the way over the bowling ball, almost a six-inch span between the thumb and fingers, yet he rolls a very smooth, straight shot. Come on. Oh, 
no, no, no. Well, he avoid, avoided the split. Well, if he had been rolling the big hook, he'd have had a 4-9 split there. But you see the just the gentle hook of Janelle doesn't break as sharply as some of the other players. He trips out the four, uh, the nine pin almost gets the four. Accuracy is what he has to count on. The man that's 5-0 is the top seed over his career. And here you see a final score. UNLV, 12th ranked, downing North Carolina State 88-82. The only time Janelle has been defeated in a championship match was in Los Angeles when he defeated it himself. He thought he needed two strikes to win the tournament. He got one strike and a five-pin count. As you see the long span of Janelle, he blew the five-pin count and gave the title to Jimmy Prince. Hook up, hook up. Probably Janello coaxes the bowling ball more than anybody on tour, as you just heard him. A little bit light, has the two, four, five, and eight standing, gets a great break, knocking out all the pins but the five pin. All right, and Mary has come in from Perrysburg, Ohio, to cheer her husband on, their daughter Anne, two years of age as of yesterday. Happy birthday, Ann. This time a seven pin. Well, we saw earlier in the telecast that big hook of Randy's coming back from the outside line and going solid in the pocket. Now as we see the ball hooking less and less as the oil or conditioner in the lane is being carried farther and farther down the lane, you don't get the same amount of hook. Remember we said it was applied 41 feet. It's probably down to about 45 feet right now. Don't forget today, in addition to boxing, what's a re-rack, Randy Peterson? The legend's last ride, Bo. Bill Shoemaker was born in Fabens, Texas, and we did a lot of races that he rode in, including all his races with Gallant Man, even the Derby. Well, he has a great record. Uh, the 98-pounder has 8,832 wins in 40,352 rides, and he's riding Patchy Ground Fog, the favorite in the race. The Santa Anita won 322 stakes races. <laughs> Still can't get a strike. He had nine in the first game victory, seven in the second, six in his third victory, not one thus far. The lanes have changed. Randy, who started his strike ball, standing in the middle of the approach, now has moved the extreme left, will throw it very hard, cross lane for the 10. Okay, we're in the championship match of the $150,000 Quaker State Open in Grand Prairie. Players and all, Ginny Halsey's establishment and Don Janello, who hasn't won since 1986, is our tournament leader. He's leading by 22 pins in the championship game, now shooting in the fourth with the spare up. Well, he's getting some breaks, Bo, breaking up splits. Well, he dominated the field for 42 games and really advantaged Janello as you see his ball drifting a little bit high. He's playing what we call a track shot in this particular bowling center, somewhere between the second and third arrows. There's a Warren area where all the amateurs have played over the years, and he's playing that area where Peterson's playing the extreme outside line. Don and his brother Larry are very proud as we look at uh, Mary Janello of a uh, new established pro shop at the Southwood Lanes in Toledo, Ohio. Site of our national championship this year, we will be bowling at Imperial Lanes. Mm -hmm. Nobody has gotten a strike yet. Fifth frame. Title, game. Oh, nice shot. And the man that did it told you the story. 310. Tough. You know, when he bowled so poorly last week in the championship round, as you see his ball going high, leaving the 310 baby split, he said it was his fault. Now, today he said he, he hoped he'd have better timing, and right now he is still struggling. But you need to make splits like this 
especially in match game competition, to keep the pressure on your opponent. Oh, beautifully converted. Don Janello. Now it's Randy Peterson and Bo. He had three such brilliant games and not so good here now. Struggling through Randy Peterson as you see the 310 being made right there. He said the lane conditions had changed. Well, on polyurethane surfaces like we have, Chris, the oil carries down instead of being absorbed into the lane. And that's just what happens. When the oil carries down, the player tries to help the ball up to make it break a little bit more, and it, then it hits the extreme dry happened. the last five feet. At least the three, six, nine, ten. Difficult three spare. Years ago. No idea. Tough shot. Key pins the nine pin. Randy Peterson, Cripple Children's Hospital. Texas Wright Hospital benefits from this event. And in New York tomorrow, the Manhattan Class Company at Off-Broadway Theater is having a bowl and a thon with all the soap opera stars from all three networks at Mid-City Lanes, the Port Authority building in Manhattan. So bowling does raise money for various causes and reasons. Strike in the six by Randy Peterson. Randy makes the right move. You wonder what to do when the oil carries down. The ball goes high, light, high, light. Move a little to the right, throw it harder. He up to speed to 17 miles an hour. He may have the combination, but he still trails this man by 22. Come on! Well, you made a good shot. That's the first time this week. Well, let's see. He looked at his watch. <laughs> He's saying, what time is it? is it? Because he made his first good shot of the match. Up to solid 10. Still has the lead, though. Here's a man that won five of his six championships from the top spot, which he is today. Had a kidney removed in 1983, and four of his six titles came following that surgery. Seemed to have no effect. And this match is perfect for Don Janelle. He's not a power player. He's not a strike player. He's a fill the frames player. Get a double here, protect it. Where Randy Peterson, he loves to throw a ton of strikes. So the match is right in Don Janelle's alley. Goodbye. Serve for Janelle. Leads the tournament. Can't make one good shot on television. Well, you heard him critiquing his shot as he drifts high, leaves the 4-7-10 split. Even though he may miss this, he'll still have a slight lead. Probably if my quarter horse, McDade, whom I rode in early for you, Tonto, <laughs> they'd probably both like to have him right now and right away. I agree. And Randy Peterson, who has really struggled for the first five frames, has a chance of the clear blue to take the lead with a strike here. Seventh frame. Remember, he was down by 22. gotta like it. I like that shot there. You saw the trajectory of Randy Peterson, you saw the ball strike, and you saw his reaction. It told the whole story as he's taken the lead for the first time. Coming up in the eighth, he can extend that lead to 14. time for Randy Peterson. He has a 14-pin lead over Janello. Eighth frame. Oh, God, go home. 
Forget it. I'll just phone in my loss on television. Well, he's finally convinced himself through uh, eight frames mm -hmm. that he's not bowling well on television. A little bit concerned, Mary. <laughs> Yes, there is pressure. You know, one game had to have match for all the marbles, and when you're on TV, it just adds a lot more. But Janelle is used to that pressure, Chris. He is just not performing well on in the championship round, and he has always done well before, and he's just beaten himself here. He doesn't have a strike through eight frames, and he's had actually four, three bad shots in the last four frames with two opens. Don's always well, talking folks, about. That's as good as it gets when I'm on TV. One six titles can't make a good shot. Okay. Let's hear maybe, it for him. maybe he's not keeping his feet slow. He's yeah, always saying. Like this. He's got those big size 13 D feet. You've got to slow him down, pal. Beautiful form covering the two four five here, but coming in that Practice crucial hard. ninth frame. Randy Peterson just needs one mark in the next two frames to win the tournament. My Peggy Fleming. Hey, skater. It was pretty graceful, that like running out the shot. <laughs> he said to himself the proper thing, make the spare in the tournament's mind. The best Janelle can bowl is 177. Randy would guarantee himself a title with this spare. God, was that a hard spare. <laughs> Randy Peterson, who defeated Tim Weisbrod, then Amleto Monicelli. Count. Eight and nine out. PBA vernacular for what he needs. Eight on the first ball and gets one of the two pins. In other words, nine out. Doesn't even have to convert to spare. Anything less than eight, he can still lose. Ooh. Randy Peterson, 27 years of age, his eighth PBA title. John Janello, blue eyes almost crying tough break for the tournament leader today. Let's now return to New York and Frank Gifford. All right, Chris, and coming up next on 8... 201 to 167, Randy Peterson, eighth title. Lots of money for Randy, and there's the breakdown. Don Janello, 14-5, Miller, 85, Monticelli, 7, and Rice Broad of Cincinnati, $6,000. Hugh Ellenberg is here, president of Quaker State Oil and Refining Company. Are you nervous? No, I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> oh. I'd like to thank Homer Ellenberg and everybody at Quaker State um, for their support in our, in our Quaker State Open. I'd like to thank everybody at Forum Bowl, Jeannie Halsey and Randy Halsey. And I figured if I didn't win this week, I'd get a job singing in the bar. So, <laughs> And you, you, you fans are unbelievable. God bless you. I love you all. You, you fans are awesome. We'll see you next year. You, I, I know you have a trophy, and I want to call in uh, Jeannie Halsey with a check. Congratulations, Randy, on a great tournament. You worked hard today, and on behalf of Quaker State, we'd like to present you with this uh, trophy here on lucky number seven.